Hello and welcome to Chalk Talk, your source for Buckeye athletic news, updates, and analysis. I'm Maddie Spielman alongside Andrew Todd Smith. Andrew, I know a lot has happened since we last met. Can you tell us about it? Sure, yeah. Uh, spring break does not mean that Buckeye athletics uh, have a, a break in their action. So lots going on. Of course, the wrestling team headed to St. Louis to compete for a national title. We had men's and women's basketball uh, commence their, their non-conference, I guess you could say, postseason, uh, their tournament runs. And then of course the men's ice hockey team headed to Detroit mm -hmm. for their Big Ten tournament. Um, so mm -hmm. lots was going on and uh, we, we're gonna be glad to welcome senior forward and captain Tanner Fritz of the ice hockey team to the show later on. So be sure to stick around, but we're gonna break down some of that action before we welcome our special guest. Yeah, very excited about our special guest, but the top headline of the week is after 94 years in the making, the wrestling team has finally earned the right to call themselves national champions. The team had a solid overall performance in St. Louis this past weekend with both Nathan Tomasello and Logan Stever, surprise, surprise, capturing individual national titles. Andrew, can you take us through what happened in these championship matches? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you said it. Logan Stever caps off a uh, in, you know, illustrious Buckeye career, the 141 pound weight class, and almost poetic that his senior year would be the one where he sets that record and is able to celebrate a team title with right. the rest of the Buckeyes. He had an 18 to one technical fall Thursday morning. He secured a fall Thursday evening to get into the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. He defeats Nebraska's ninth seeded Anthony Abedin with another technical fall, 16 to one. I mean, this guy was so dominant during his college career and he just continued that. Definitely, but hey, he wasn't the only national championship, right? You're correct. Uh, it, w it was a cool story to have uh, Logan Stieber take down Mitchell Port from Edinburgh um, in his final because they had faced each other already mm -hmm. at the national duels. And so Stieber takes down Port, but that's not even the most compelling storyline because you have Tomasello in the 125 pound weight class. He gets on route to his title to upset top seeded Missouri wrestler Alan Waters in his semifinal matchup. So of course he was a four, four seed mm -hmm. um, in that bracket wrestling a little more complicated than your typical basketball bracket because you have wrestle backs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have some guys that might suffer an early defeat, able to get back in the mix. You know, you had uh, Bo Jordan have a third place finish. So really, uh, you know, an impressive showing. You mentioned the two individual titles, the team title. But Kenny Quartz, 184 pound weight class is the one that was able to clinch it for the team. So uh, just a storybook season for Tom Ryan and his men. Yeah, well, Stieber was actually named the NCAA's most dominant wrestler and the NWCA's most outstanding wrestler. He also becomes the fourth wrestler in history to win four NCAA titles. What a way to end his career. He will surely be missed. Yep, no doubt. Uh, he joins athletes from Iowa State, Cornell, and Oklahoma State as being the only uh, individuals to ever accomplish the feat. So yeah. nothing but hats <laughs> off to Mr. Stieber and Definitely. company. Definitely, and congrats to the entire team. Meanwhile, the women's basketball team had a heartbreaking buzzer beater loss against North Carolina that ultimately knocked them out of the tournament and ended their season. Despite the outcome, the Lady Buckeyes showed some serious heart coming back and tying the game with just seconds left from a 23-point deficit. Although their sudden surge of dominance came too little too late, the Buckeyes finished their season with an impressive overall record of 24-11. and 11. Freshman standout Kelsey Mitchell, who we talked about a lot, not only ended her season as the nation's leading scorer, but also set the all-time NCAA single season record for three-pointers made with 127 three-pointers. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Absolutely remarkable. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell uh, car carrying this team, I feel like, is a disservice to the rest of the team that was right. playing so well. Um, but you hate to see them suffer such heartbreaking defeats, both in the Big Ten tournament, in, the, in the championship against Maryland, uh, and then succumbing to North Carolina. A little bit of controversy, uh, because you know some, it seemed like some members of the bench for the Tar Heels were on the court, there's yeah. point six seconds left, mm -hmm. you know, but credit to the Tar Heels uh, for getting business done. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were a number four seed, so it would have been an upset had Ohio State capped the comeback off. But uh, yeah, of, of course, unfortunate to see the ladies come home during the third round. Yeah, well, you know, the good thing about this team is it's a young team. So what can we look forward to them in the future? No question about it. Well, Kelsey Mitchell, she is so clutch, and she's only going to get better mm -hmm. during her Buckeye career. But as you mentioned, the rest of the team very young, too. So she has the game-tying three-pointer with 39 seconds left. 
and then North Carolina takes a lead again. She gets two free throws to, with an opportunity to tie the game. If she sinks both of them, mm. of course she does because that's what Kelsey Mitchell does. She operates as a cool customer under pressure. Uh, and those free throws actually, miraculously, that one point from the second free throw, give her the single season Big Ten scoring record with 873 points. Uh, so she ties the game at 84 apiece. Uh, but no, as we said, North Carolina would uh, get a last second victory there. She has the second most points scored by a freshman in NCAA history. So Buckeye fans, what does this mean for you? You got some exciting women's basketball to witness the next couple years. But it would, as I said, disservice to not mention the rest of the team. Alexa Hart, she has a double-double yeah. in a losing effort. She has 13 of them uh, throughout the season, the most of anybody on a team. So she's that quiet performer that just sort of, oh, goodness, okay, she's got 11 <laughs> rebounds. Where'd that come from? Um, and, of course, Amherst Olsen scores 30 points, again, in a losing effort. Jeez. So nothing but good things to expect from this team. Uh, they bring back essentially everyone with the exception of Amy Scullion, the senior. Mm. So, yeah, I, I'm expecting big things. We had said, oh, the women, they'll probably get a five or a six seed. We were correct. They yeah. got the five seed. I think they're going to be even better next year. Yeah, well, good things to look forward to. Moving on to the men for the next game, the Buckeyes got Pac-12 champs Arizona. Can you tell us what happened in this game? Yeah, uh, absolutely. As predicted uh, in said March Madness special, it was a Buckeye defeat. Uh, Arizona was 32-3 going into that game. Pac-12 champs, 43-26 to in favor of the Wildcats. Wow. Bear down Arizona, and that's exactly what they did. Sophomore forward, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, he has a double-double. TJ McConnell, he gets 19 points. And Gabe York, off the bench, also gets 19 points. Oh. Uh, no big deal. Hits five and nine from behind the arc for three pointers. Casual. Uh, yeah, just uh, you know, like I said, no big deal. Yeah, Arizona pulled away in that game. Uh, D'Angelo Russell shot pretty terribly in yeah. that game. Uh, three of nineteen on the day, but he did lead the team with six assists. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, Arizona, the strong two seed. Uh, one of the more convincing teams, uh, certainly in that region, uh, with Wisconsin, but I, I expect them to have a, a decent run into the second weekend of the tournament because they were so strong against the Buckeyes. So, points off turnovers it was another killer for the Buckeyes. Mm -hmm. They only committed 12, but that gave Arizona 20 points. So, not really much you can do when uh, you know you're you're losing that battle so convincingly. But uh, we'll have to see what happens next year because, of course, if you yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, if you lose Russell to potentially an NBA, a, a very successful NBA future, yeah. uh, you've got Jay Sean Tate likely coming back. But you're losing seniors. I know. You're losing Sam Thompson, Shannon Scott, Amir Williams, uh, Trey McDonald. You know, <clears throat> you're losing all these guys. So Thad Mata will have a task in front of him to reload and have another successful year next year. And as promised earlier in the show, we have welcomed the newest member of our Lantern team, senior forward and captain of the hockey team, Tanner Fritz. Tanner, it's a pleasure to have you on board, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Um, so after snagging five of the six possible points at Wisconsin, the Buckeyes headed to the Big Ten tournament in Detroit as a fifth seed. Ohio State were going to take on the Nittany Lions in the quarterfinals, who they would go on to win 3-1 over and then eventually lose 0-3 over conference champion Minnesota in the semifinals. The Buckeyes' overall record ended up being 23-12-3 on the year. Tanner, what was your takeaway looking back on this season in your final days of Scarlet and Gray? Uh, it's weird for it to be coming to an end like that, but you know, it was a great experience. Um, especially the last month that our team had, you know, we were probably one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten uh, once you look at our record in the last month. But, you know, going into the Joe, uh, the team was fully confident. And uh, unfortunately, things didn't really go the way we wanted and how we wanted them to turn out. But, you know, once I'm looking back, it was a great four years. And, you know, I'm just truly blessed to, you know, get the opportunity that I did. You guys going 7-2-1 and one, your final 10 games. Uh, you go into this Penn State matchup probably expecting some physical play in the conference tournament, but no penalties, no power plays. W was the game less physical than you, what you expected for being, you know, so so much being on the line for both teams, kind of a win or go home situation? Yeah, I think you would uh, expect a little bit more physical game, especially with the kind of teams we are, Penn State and Ohio State. But uh, I think the refs wanted to stay out of the game, you know, let the guys play. It's uh, kind of playoff mentality and once you get into playoff hockey you know there's not many penalties during 
you know, that kind of hockey. So I think we expected that going in, and you know, it kind of turned out in our favor. Anyways, we had uh, three even strength goals. So, you know, uh, just kind of unfortunate that the next game didn't really work out that way. You know, we were shorthanded a little bit more than we wanted to be, but you know, that's how the chips go sometimes. All right, we're switching gears to a little bit more of a brighter side. Um, Tanner, can you tell us what was the most enjoyable part of this road trip as a whole? Um, I think just probably being at the Joe Lewis Arena, uh, just all the history that's been there. You know, as a kid, you know, I grew up watching the Red Wings. I love the Red Wings. Yeah. Dream you know. come true for you, right? Yeah, exactly. So to be able to play there is my second time. Uh, we played there in the CCHA semifinals too. So, you know, it's a great rink. It's old, but, you know, there's a ton of history there. So with all the Stanley Cup banners, you know, the conference banners, all that kind of stuff, seeing that, it just kind of, you know, gives you the shivers because, you know, that rink's probably not going to be here, you know, five years down the road, they're getting a new rink. So, you know, being able to play there at least one more time in my career, it's, uh, it's definitely kind of a dream come true for me. So, Tanner, you talked about, you know, emotional trip to the Joe. Obviously, you know, you get to see the way they do things in the pros, go to their dressing room. Um, had to be especially sort of, uh, not necessarily sentimental, but sort of an inspiring moment for especially you and Matt Johnson, the other six seniors that are on your way out of this program. Um, can you just sort of talk about what you see the Ohio State program based on your accomplishments and your contributions from like a leadership standpoint, where you see them headed in the coming years, whether you know it's underclassmen that you see stepping up or just things you see happening from some of your teammates? Yeah, I think the program has a bright future. Uh, you know, as seniors, I think I've laid a you know a great foundation you know, for the younger guys, you know, I think we've been all, you know, pretty good role models on and off the ice. So, you know, it's all about the culture you bring in, all about the new guys, you know, how they can step up in the years to come. And, you know, losing, I think it's 18 years, you know, that's a lot of players and that's a lot of, you know, holes you got to fill. But, you know, like I said, the future is bright and there's, uh, there's a lot of young talent on that team. And, you know, I think guys that you need to watch out for are uh, Weiss and Schilke, you know. You know, they bring a lot of offensive talent. You know, those are guys that coaching staff's going to lean on a lot next year and following years to come. So, you know, I think those those two guys specifically offensively you should keep an eye on, definitely. Shoki seemed like he was always in the box score as one of the top two shot takers. Yeah. So I guess no surprise there from my sort of third-party, you know, objective perspective that he would be one of the guys you tab yeah. um, to, to continue to contribute to this team. Okay, so Tanner, looking back on your incredible career and all your accomplishments, is there one person in your mind that kind of stands out to you that's, you know, been there for you from day one and kind of has helped you along the way? Uh, it's kind of cliche, but everyone always says their parents. But, you know, for me, without my family, without my parents, you know, I would never be in the situation I am today. So, you know, I have to thank them. I, I give them the credit, you know, when I wanted to quit or, you know, I didn't want to go to practice in the morning, they would always be the ones to push me to go there. They wouldn't push too hard, you know. They always, you know, shoulder to cry on sometimes, you know, when I was younger, going through some tough times. But, you know, they were always there for me, so I'd have to, you know, obviously thank them. So, Tanner, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for coming on the show and providing us with all this insight and feedback and sort of behind-the-scenes insider information. But fun fact for Chalk Dog viewership, this is not the last time we're going to have Tanner on the show. Of course, we talked about the Big Ten tournament and him wrapping up his career at Ohio State. But we've got future to talk about, personal, professional, NHL aspirations. We want to dedicate the appropriate amount of time on the show to be able to do that. So, again, thank you for coming on. Um, but, Maddie, if you want to take it away with social media and our send-off. Yeah, definitely. Everyone be sure to follow Chalk Talk on Twitter, at Chalk Talk OSU, hashtag CTOSU. That's all for this week. For Andrew Todd Smith and Tanner Fritz, I'm Maddie Spielman. See you next time. Take care.